Hello guys, I'm Ukrainian. And apart from many beautiful things, this also means that I live under constant attacks, as millions of my countrymen, because of Russia. Every day we experience bombings, shellings, air raid alerts, different kinds of explosions and destructions. So honestly, it is very difficult for me to demonstrate compassion when talking about attacks in Moscow, but I feel there is a need to clarify some important moments. Honestly, I wanted to ignore this topic after the very first report because, of course, it is not Ukraine. But I feel there are many important facts that I can explain from an ordinary Ukrainian perspective and that's what I want to do in this video. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against the Russian propaganda and fake news. And my long-time friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. Last week, Moscow experienced a very serious attack. More than 100 people died, many were injured. And even before this attack happened, Putin and his colleagues knew they will blame Ukraine. Why am I saying this, that they knew even before the attack happened? Because, first of all, everyone warned them, starting from the US Embassy in Moscow and all the intelligence services of all the intelligent countries. But they have chosen to ignore it, and there are even recordings of Putin commenting on this information, saying it is BS. Any adequate leader receiving this kind of information would definitely at least look at it. But Putin decided to ignore because perhaps he is one of the people who organized this attack. I know once again for many of you living in normal environments it's really difficult to believe something like that is possible, but observing the recent history of Russia and Putin's reign we do know he organized a number of such attacks whenever he needed a change in his politics or something like that. It happened in Russia, it happened in Chechnya, it happened in other places too verify some actions, to uh, approve something or to get to a new level of escalation, mobilization and also to influence the opinion of other nations. I trust that you believe it is not Ukraine because first of all there are no facts and no things uh, proving it might have been Ukraine and it's definitely not our style and it would be totally impossible. Plus we have ISIS claiming it was their attack. But uh, they try to influence those countries that are already their allies, like China, like many countries of Africa, like India. And unfortunately, many of them may believe and continue developing this very negative image of Ukraine. Actually, there were lots of uh, funny memes in Ukraine stating that it is for the first time in history that ISIS claims its responsibility for an attack and no one believes them. And perhaps they don't know how to react in such case. But of course, we should not de deny their participation in this uh, bloody uh, incident. But, but... It is very likely that FSB agents knew about that and decided not to stop it or maybe even encourage that. This is, unfortunately, a typical tactics inside authoritarian regimes. Once again, there are lots of symptoms. They knew it's coming. They were um, informed, but they decided not to react, if not to inspire this. This is awful and uh, we have to be prepared to fight against that disinformation because it will appear in your countries too, blaming your countries just as they do in case with Ukraine, in case with Poland, for example, or the US. Half of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. Please do. It is the best way to demonstrate your solidarity and help spread more information about Ukraine. And once again, we need this information to fight Russian fakes. They are everywhere and I'm sure you already suffer from them in your uh, countries. They are not always open BS. Sometimes they seem like your own national narratives, your own national problems, but heated up and brought in a very wrong timing to shake our democracies, to cause chaos and then to win over us. But it won't happen because we are 
clever enough. So anyway, I feel that all of our allies realize, first of all, this is definitely not the Ukrainian style. Second, this does not give us anything. And third, we have a real uh, organization, if it's possible to say so. You realize I am avoiding stop words for YouTube. There are definitely more uh, <laughs> bright words that I might have used here, but I avoid them. So anyway, we have ISIS saying they did it. And Russia says, no, we know, it's Kyiv. Uh, what is uh, bad that observing the situation, uh, listening to Russian BS, people even in the countries that are our friends forget about attacks that happen daily in my country. For example, last night, it was everywhere. It was all around the country. Lots of critical infrastructure was destroyed and people already treat it as something normal. One of my friends told me that lots of people bring flowers to Russian embassy after the attack. And I totally understand your kindness. And of course, I feel sorry for the people who died in such totally unnecessary event. But I can imagine that for us to be just, all the Ukrainian embassies in all the countries of the world should be covered up to the roof with flowers because every day we have people killed by Russia that is just similar as ISIS. Did you know that they've killed more than 600 children since the start of full-scale war and close to 2,000 severely uh, wounded and many stolen and people still treat Russia as a country and Putin not as a greatest criminal on the planet, but as a negotiable person. And this has to change uh, because similar things will continue, of course, uh, even organizing it together potentially with ISIS, FSB agents could not predict all the consequences. And what we observe now in Russia, and Russia is an extremely nationalist country, uh, that there are waves of hatred towards people from Tajikistan who uh, were claimed responsible for this attack in Moscow. And uh, there are lots of people from uh, Central Asia in Russia on low paid jobs. And uh, Moscow needs them uh, in war effort. Many of them work for military industry. Many people, by the way, of non-Russian origin are in Russian army. I think maybe the majority. And Russia does awful ethnic crimes against these people, mobilizing them, sending them as midwaves to Ukrainian front lines without the supply, without the preparation. But it has also uh, risen this heat of hatred inside extremely chauvinistic Russian society. But after the attack, you will see lots of Russian propagandists, lots of Russian vloggers expressing hatred and desire to punish these people from Central Asia that are all around Russia. And this may cause another wave of violence inside this evil empire. So we have to be very careful and not let them manipulate our opinion and be prepared. Because this is just like ISIS. Russia is modern day state that has chosen this attitude. And sometimes I do feel bad, like when we know that for um, renowned groups, there is one reaction and for country, uh, the so-called president, a totally different one. These are similar attacks um, centered on civilians, on the objects like schools, hospitals, trying to cause as many um, wounds, tragedies, destructions as possible without any specific reason. What is that if not the word that YouTube hates so much? But we all understand because this is the present day policy and message of Russia to the world. Please remember similar things happen in your societies and I always feel very bad whenever something similar happens. I've been uh, in um, this autumn, I've been to uh, Brussels, uh, when two Swedes were killed in a similar attack and I felt so bad for you people and I understand how it feels but remember this happens on a daily basis in Ukraine and it is not normal. We are normal people. It's not okay for us. So please spread this message and of course it is not Kyiv, it is not Ukraine, it is Russia. 
Thank you once again for being friends. Uh, remember to join me on Instagram. Also, I'm active on X and threads. And no, I'm not in the theater. I'm again in cave. And maybe tomorrow I will show you some updates from ordinary life in cave on my Instagram. Uh, we have a Discord community. Also, we have a beautiful merch shop with lots of t-shirts that work well as conversation starters. Uh, thank you for buying me coffee. I wanted to show you my cup. <laughs> really big here, right? So thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. That's an honor and an inspiration to have you in my life. United we stand and united we win. Slava Ukraina!